Colin Brackus, and today I'm going to be teaching you guys um, a bit of a Fender Sport Guide. So I'm going to start off with going over the abilities, the build, playstyle, and matchups, but if you want to skip over to the end of the video, I'm going to be doing some more gameplay aspects, so here's to do an actual gameplay um, of Fender Sport. So let's get straight into the abilities. First of all, his passive is very simple. As you gain auto attacks, you build stacks, at 5 stacks, the abilities have extra attacks. The main thing I remember doing your passive on is you unchained your first ability, you want to go over it first. Um, you basically will just jump, your shorter range than normal jump start, it's a short range jump, ton of damage, ton of skill, stuns, and the cooldown is reset if you hit somebody. It's a very good ability, and this is what you want to be using your runes on most of the time. Seething Howl, this ability is just a power and lifesteal. The late game, this is a very good thing to use your runes on, as it lets the box very well. And really, you don't want to get it. You don't want to use it to late game, but late game is a very bad mistake. It allows you to box late game warriors as a support. Which is pretty fun. Brutalize is your main damaging skill. You basically just beat the crap out of them. It does a ton of damage. You don't really want to use your runes on this unless you're going camps. And Ragnarok the ult. This just basically pulls, your, pulls them towards you. And the pull basically just puts them in a position. Never use your runes on that rock, there's no point in your runes ever on this skill. Let's go in, let's talk about a quick combo first actually. When you have all your stacks of unbound runes, try to, when you use your unchained, while they're stunned, use a basic tap, and you cancel it into either Brutalize or Red Rock. Remember that. Because they're stunned, you have enough time to get an auto attack off, and then you cancel it into Brutalize and or Red Rock. Um, the auto attack is just free damage because they're stunned anyways. The Ragnarok and Brutalize are guaranteed, so you might as well just use an auto attack before you use Brutalize. Just get a bit extra damage, considering Fender's auto attacks tend to hurt early game, so you know. Good for thought. Let's go into the build here. Now, this build, the starter notes. The Lucidorm Pendant is ridiculously strong on Fender's support, considering it's bred and butter combo of Undown. Uh, Brutalize applies both stacks of boost on pendant. Coin power is ridiculous. Uh, what you do is you go into your potion of physical might. This gives you an early game power spike and the support roll. You get to destroy the enemy to see any support that you choose. You get three health pops at 14 seconds. You drink your potion and divide two health pops and you head for damage. The thing to remember is when you get to the damage buff, you should be taking the damage buff from your mid laner. Tell your mid laner first, don't be a jerk like I am all the time. Or you can be a jerk like I am all the time, you know what I'm saying. But the damage buff is really powerful on Fender support early game. It basically guarantees you are really kill in lane, or you freeze out the wave as we'll see me freezing out the wave in the game for later. later. The core the core item. It's basically warrior tabby, it's the core item you want to build this as soon as you can. 40 power, 18 movement speed, very strong. Now, the rest of the core items, Yotin's Wrath, Melody Renewal, and Heartwood Amulet, are situation. Which, in the order, in the order you're writing, you're gonna, buy, you're gonna want to buy all three, and probably Sovereignty, I wouldn't say Sovereignty is a necessity. Sometimes Pestilence, and sometimes Midgardian Mail might be more useful than Sovereignty, considering all of these protections from Melody Renewal early really on. So, if you're ahead, go Yotin's Wrath. If you're even or behind, you choose one of these two items. If they have a ton of magical damage, and the magical damage is putting you behind, the magical damage is destroying you, go Heartwood. If it's physical damage, go Mail of Renewal. You can go Jotun's Wrath, go Jotun's Wrath. After that, so if you build Mail of Renewal, go Jotun's next. If you build Heart Ward, go Jotun's next. Don't buy both and then Jotun can also do no damage and go use this. Um, sovereignty. You usually want to buy after after all those four items. You usually want to pick Sovereignty, but you don't have to. I highly recommend you do it though. For damage, Soul Eater is very strong. Life Steel lets you get blocks late game. The attacks are useful. Protection aura is great. Grollage Beast Stick if they have lots of healers. Runeforged Hammer has some power, some protection. It's a nifty item, but and you're stacking a lot on physical defense. Tang Spain just gives you raw damage. Um, Pestilence is good if they have lots of healers and you want more magical protections. Frostband Hammer for slow and utility. And Mid Guardian Mail against the auto attackers. Um, actives, Shell Absorption is a very powerful active on Fenrir because considering you're not building full tank like a Geb, it's going to be very useful to make yourself tankier and your entire team tank. Create a purification if they have lots of CC, like a Hoon Not Salt. Um, in the gameplay, I don't buy it because I'm stupid. You should have bought it, to be fair. 
Weakening curse is great. Team fighting reduces training and healers. Even though it's been nerfed, it still shuts down healers pretty well. Have the agility again. If they have, if they're taking from the weakening curses, this will make you immune to the weakening curses. Great, great pickup. Sanctuary wards, wards, you know, casual games. You might not find as much, but if you're playing ranks, you might as well pick up some games. You know, nice. Potion plus the night, as I said earlier, is getting useful. Um, do I buy something at the end of the game? The end of the game should be picking this up, and you can afford a 3k pop by elixir of defense because just the tanking <laughs> is invaluable. The abilities. Ability order at level 1, you have pick up unchained, you try to max out brutalize, and then unchained. Um, one option you have at level 4 here, you can choose to skip and not put anything in and put another point to brutalize and another point to Ragnar at rank 5. Just doesn't really matter. If you want to do that, go ahead. I just like more having the extra damage on unchained, you know, it's personal preference though. Passing you want to max out brutalize, then unchained, then seething howl. Like, you don't put a point to seething howl until you've maxed out both unchained and brutalize. Then you max out Seeping Howl and finally put points at Ragnarok because you're not using Ragnarok for damage, generally. You might argue that you want to max Ragnarok for Seeping Howl. I disagree, but it's personal preference. If you rather damage on Ragnarok than the Seeping Howl, it's up to you to do what the hell you want. Going to the match. Sorry about that, I'm back. So, of course, you do not want to fight against this. You don't want to fight against Athena, Ymir, and Kumba. They're hard to see and easily breaks out of Brutalize. The ones who are even matchups are Ares, Sylvanas, Kepri, and Bacchus. They have ways of escaping Brutalized and taking you out of Brutalized, but they're generally pretty hard to do. They're pretty, pretty hard to do. Kepri's hard to face and duck. Sylvanas, well, can root you. Ares can uh, chain you out, which can be weird. It's hard to hit, though. I think Bacchus can jump out. But Jumping out is not big of a deal because you're not generally any focusing Bacchus. And you're not having any very this jump. And the Great Belt will generally not be great at Google because it's kind of hard to hit all of it on Defender. You destroy Geb and you destroy Sobek. You destroy them so hard, you see them generally pick Fender no matter what because Geb can't break you out. Neither can Sobek. You destroy them but can't break out the ADC. Except for Sobek can fuck you. But it's hard again, it's hard for you. He can't really, he can't, he can't peel off of you. You know what I'm saying? I probably messed something up. Like, get, get number one thing to destroy. Get, destroy completely. Let's look at what warrior she destroys in the support role. Uh, Bologna is pretty well against. Tier, pretty well against. Not gonna see Tier very much though. Guan Yu, you destroy Guan Yu, you destroy Guan Yu. Nothing to do. Can't do anything against Brutalize. Perk's kind of the same deal as a, um, Ares, great deal. It's kind of hard to do. Odin can jump and crush you. Odin's not very fun, but you can't break out of Brutalize. And Tsun Wukong you do pretty well against, but you can't break out of Brutalize. The Hunters that you do well against. I mean, you get destroyed by Apollo. Don't pick into Apollo. Please do not pick Fenrir to the Apollo, this is impossible. But you do pretty well, because you can jump out of Brutalize very easily. And see you destroy. Rom can cripple you out of Brutalize. That's not that bad. Shibuanka, you destroy. Jika, you destroy. But you say destroy, you can back without brutalizing some pain. Ooh, you can kind of tap destroy, because you can use this glory bound or whatever the hell that ability spell to get out. On her can just jump out very easily. She, I think I mentioned everyone. And Freya. And Freya is hard time, because Freya can banish you out, and Kronos is time stop and can't really stop you out. So that's the general matchups you're looking at. It's a bit of the playstyle you're gonna look at. I'll show you more in the video, but playstyle you're trying to force you're trying to force them out of lane. You can get a first blood very quickly, you gotta jump on them, brutalize them. Sometimes you can get them before they even get to, to wave, but you can clear wave fast. You can clear the camp fast enough, you get one creep, you hit level two, your unbanned brutalized combo will two shot most people up. When they're level one, you're level two, which should be happening because you have incredible clear. You can basically one shot someone out of lane. If that doesn't happen, freeze the wave, because it'll force them to approach you, they approach you, they die, because you're Fenrir. Anyways, I'm going to cut to the gameplay now. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments, and I'll be sure to answer them. And I hope you enjoy the gameplay.